Got a nice present in the mail today. A little light rating to do. I, one of my, my previous video, my first video, I had mentioned that the family had once owned the Ellesmere Chaucer and uh, it passed from them to the Drury family of Hostead, Norfolk in 1568 uh, at the death of Henry Payne, Esquire, Lord of Mountain Manor, uh, near Bury St. Edmunds. He was Lord of the Manor at Mountain and the bailiff at the Manor of Hengrave under Sir Thomas Kitson. And Henry's father, William Payne, had been the bailiff of Hengrave under the third Duke of Buckingham until he lost his head. But there's, um, it, within the pages, there's uh, family graffiti. Uh, I'm going through here and I recognize some of the names, the Calthorpe family, of course, the Drurys, uh, the Jernigans, uh, Sir Roger North or Lord North. I believe he became Lord North, but I believe that's got to be him, our North. There's Jernigan, I'm sure. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's funny to me. I, I, well, I find it funny. Um, is the name Marjorie St. John. Here, here, here we go, here's one. So this is just Marjorie. But throughout these opening pages of the Ellesmere Chaucer, there's Marjorie St. John. And in one instance, uh, I was informed by the Huntington Library that it actually says uh, Marjorie St. John is a shrew. <laughs> I think that's a little humorous. But it's exciting. I, I kind of alluded to it. I've given details in my previous video about the ownership and how I believe it descends from a connection that the Payne family have with the Chaucers that dates back to the, um, well, actually, the reign of Edward III um, is when the Paynes and the Chaucers appear to have become closely associated um, uh, in London and in Norfolk. In London, uh, of course, Chaucer uh, worked at the Customs House there. And just at the foot of the customs house, the Paynes owned a, uh, a, a wharf there called Payne's Key. It went by various names, Child's Key, Payne's Key, I think various other names over the centuries, but the Paynes had been in possession of that uh, since the, um, the 13th century. They also owned one in Southampton. Another member of the family, a John Payne in Southampton owned a key I don't know the name of it, but they were in the possession of it. Uh, records show from 1275 or 95. I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's an interesting connection because, you know, the Chaucer being in the wine uh, business and the Paynes having a wharf, uh, you know, it just speaks that there was a connection there. That might have been where they met, but it actually goes deeper than that. John Payne, the chief butler of England and the uh, uh, constable of Norwich Castle, who died in 1402. Uh, of course, in his job as Pincerna Regis, as chief butler, uh, he basically was purchasing all the wine for the uh, uh, household. Uh, and I don't know if the entire court, but at least the household is. He was kind of like the king's drinking buddy, to tell you the truth. And uh, was very close to him and had his ear and... Uh, had uh, been in exile with uh, uh, Henry IV uh, during the, that entire time and had been on a crusade with him and returned uh, when he became king and he was appointed uh, chief butler. And at that point, the records show where he was making purchases of wine from the Chaucers uh, during that period, and I'm gonna let my dog out while I'm talking before he drives me nuts. Um, but anyway, 
it, it's it's interesting because of that connection there uh, with the Chaucers and of course the Duke of Lancaster. Uh, uh, John Payne had been within the, uh, the, the he was a retainer of John of Gaunt, as was Ch uh, Geoffrey Chaucer. Uh, of course, the Duke of Lancaster made and married Catherine Swinford, the sister of Philippa, uh, who married uh, Geoffrey Chaucer. So Chaucer became the Duke's brother-in-law. And uh, those sisters were the daughters of another Payne. His, they, he went by the name Payne de Rote, um, and he was um, uh, uh, he, he was a man from Hanalt. He, he was had to have been in the uh, a retainer of the uh, the queen uh, when she came uh, from Hanalt. Uh, she had been princess of Hanalt, I think, or queen. I can't remember, but anyway, uh, she was now queen of England, and. Um, Came over, he came over with her, and I find that highly suspicious. But anyway, I can't go into all those details now. This is already a lengthy video, even at six minutes. But, but anyway, I just wanted to share this with you in that little story, and uh, I get a kick out of it, and I'm, I'm gonna I enjoy reading this. Um, I, ha I do have some trouble reading uh, this uh, uh, early script, but uh, I've gotten the hang of it over the years. And I, I shouldn't have too much trouble with it, especially since it's in English. I'm used to uh, having to translate it from Latin or uh, or French. So, um, so I'm going to be giving this a go over time. I've got plenty of time in my retirement to do it now. But um, anyway, I hope you enjoy that. Please subscribe to my channel. I need some I need some people to like it. Keep give me some encouragement to make some more videos. Tell some uh, stories that. I'm sure you've never heard of before, and I hope they're of, as, of interest to you as they are to me. So take care. Till next time.